You may or may not have noticed that YouTube has made a lot of changes to the public facing side of YouTube, as well as the creator studio in YouTube that's for us content creators. So because of that, I'm going to share with you all of the different things that you need to make sure that you have set up on your channel to make sure that you are optimizing for success this year. And we're starting right now. The very first thing I wanna talk about is for mobile devices, it is no longer necessary to even worry about the information that you have in your channel art. Here's why. YouTube has moved the top part of your About Me page over to the front of your channel page. They're showing your channel name, your subscriber count, how many videos you have published, but most importantly, they're sharing a snippet of information from your About Me page that helps the viewers understand what it is that you offer on your channel. At the time of this recording, you wanna optimize that area for around 115 characters. Of course, depending on what letters you use, it could go over or under that just a tad, but right around 115 characters is what you wanna go for. When you're putting that text blur together, the thing that you want to think about the most is how can I use this to tell the viewer exactly what it is that they're going to get from my content? That's what you want to use that area for. But keep in mind at the time of this recording on computers, they don't have that. They still have to go to your About Me page. So for right now, until they end up changing it for computers as well, make sure that you do still have that stuff in your channel art so that you can make sure that you do have that clarity there for the people that are visiting your channel on a computer. The next thing you wanna to do to get your channel ready for this year is you wanna make sure that if you are not uploading shorts on a regular basis, that you move those shorts to the very bottom of your channel page or you remove them from your channel page completely. Then once you remove that shorts playlist, you wanna add a playlist of the content that people come to you for on a regular basis. But if you are uploading shorts on a regular basis, leave it on there because then in that case, you know, people can easily find your shorts and they can get lost in your shorts, which is an awesome thing. But if you are uploading long form content and shorts, then in that case, just prioritize which one is the most important and make sure that you have that one at the very top. Next, you wanna make sure that you're adding a branding watermark to your YouTube channel. YouTube has an additional icon that ends up showing up when people are watching your YouTube videos and you can turn that into a subscribe button. It's already a subscribe button. You just add a subscribe graphic to help draw attention to it to remind people to subscribe to your YouTube channel. In fact, there's a really good chance that you see mine right now down in the bottom right hand side of the video. That's the thing I'm talking about. You can make these yourself. You can find them on the internet, but just be careful that you have the rights to use them. Or you could just get them at Tuber Tools. We have them for around $2 and you get a whole pack of them. Tuber Tools is my website, by the way. I'll put a link to that down in the description. The next thing you want to do is you want to go in just as a little bit of housekeeping and refresh your upload defaults. In order to do this, all you have to do is go into your creator studio, click on settings, click on upload defaults. These upload default settings apply to your videos when you upload them. So you can go ahead and add whatever links that you typically add to your videos in your upload defaults. You can add any tags that you commonly use in your upload defaults. You can also, and this is the thing that I wanna to bring to your attention most, you can also make sure that your visibility is set to unlisted. The reason you want it set to unlisted is because if you set a video private, you're not going to be able to add a pinned comment to it. You're not gonna be able to submit it for captions. If you pay a service to do your captions, anything like that, you are going to be locked out of just a few features when it comes to publishing your video to where you can't fully get it ready. So because of that, you wanna make sure that you're uploading as unlisted so you can fully get everything ready that you need for your video before it's time to publish. Because there's nothing worse than publishing a video. You go in, you're trying to interact in your comments, then you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot to do this. Then you have to go in and do that. And then you're like, oh no, I forgot to do this other thing. Then you gotta go in and do that. You get the idea. So because of that, you wanna make sure that you have it set to unlisted to make sure that you avoid those types of situations. The next thing you wanna do within that same window, but one tab over is click on advanced settings. When you click on that, you're gonna see something that says automatic chapters with a little checkbox next to it. What you wanna think about here is you wanna think about with your type of content, is chapters appropriate for your type of content? If they are, then in that case, go ahead and check the box that says to allow automatic chapters. But if you're like, hey, I'm a vlogger, chapters aren't really great for the type of content that I'm making in that situation, make sure you uncheck this box so that YouTube doesn't come in and add chapters to your videos later. Another thing that's a fairly new thing inside of this particular section is where they have the option for your title and description language. So whatever language it is that you make your videos in, you wanna make sure that you have that set to that language underneath the language and caption certification area. Another thing you wanna do for the sake of keeping your comments clean is you wanna go down to the comments area in that same exact box and you wanna make sure under comment visibility that you have have hold potentially inappropriate comments for review selected. This will help keep your comments clean. Of course, there's gonna be people that'll break through. However, this will keep things mostly clean. 
The next thing you wanna do is within the same area, but it's under the community side. So you wanna click on community in that same box. Now, once you click on community, what you're gonna see is you're going to see moderators, approved users, hidden users, and all that. You actually wanna scroll down to the lower part of this particular section. And the reason for that is you have two things I wanna bring your attention to here. The very first is your blocked words. Now, with your blocked words, this is where if you have somebody that's trolling you or you have comments that people typically say things you don't like or you wanna add profile Vanity, those sorts of things into this box to keep your comment section clean. All those WhatsApp scammers and all that, you can add the words WhatsApp and, and individual numbers and things like that to keep your comments a lot cleaner. You add all of that stuff to this blocked words list. So if there's anything that people are saying that you don't like or anything that you want to avoid showing up in your comment section, you add it to this box. The next thing is the blocked links box that is underneath that one. So you wanna make sure you have that box checked and that's also going to cut down on the amount of people dropping links in your comments to try to drop drive people to their websites and other videos and so on. If you move one tab over, we're gonna be on the defaults tab. Now with the defaults tab, what you wanna do here is you wanna make sure that you have underneath the comments on your channel section that you have hold it potentially inappropriate comments for review. This is gonna be reflected over from your upload defaults. But you also wanna make sure over on your right hand side, if you're somebody that live streams, then you wanna make sure that you have hold potentially inappropriate chat messages for review checked as well. What these things are gonna do is they're gonna help keep your comment section clean on your videos, but they're also going to help keep your live chat clean. The next thing I wanna bring to your attention is if you are a live streamer, YouTube now has the functionality to where you can add a trailer to your live stream. So you can create a video, upload that video before your live stream, and then you can connect it. You can use the same trailer for every live stream if you want to, but the idea is that you have a trailer that tells people exactly what it is that they're gonna get out of your live stream or why they should come participate so that when you schedule your live stream, instead of having just a static image right there with just that little reminder, you're gonna have a full video to where you're talking to the people that are clicking on that, deciding if they wanna click on the reminder or not. Use it, it's effective. Now look, if you're watching this video, there's a really good chance that you're somebody that is trying to take YouTube seriously this year. So because of that, I want you to click into this playlist right here that's videos for people that are just starting out on YouTube that's gonna help you get a really strong start here on YouTube. So go ahead and click into that now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.